Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video, I'm actually gonna share with you my two different lighting options that I have used for my reselling business. One is my permanent station that I use for pretty much everything now, but I do have a second lighting option that I did get for a slightly different purpose and I have used it for photos and so I think I could kind of speak to both of them. Um, but yeah, so if you're interested in kind of hearing my thoughts and some lighting options, uh, feel free to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, all of that kind of fun stuff. We are actually upstairs in my loft area. This is one half of my loft and I'm going to actually start with my box lights because that's what I primarily use. We'll come back to the ring light in a second. Um, so I have a A-frame cabin and I am in a loft, which is an open, you can see a railing. Um, so this actually can be seen from my downstairs area and why I think, I feel like I'm off to the side, but that's okay. Um, why I set up my photo station here was because I have somewhat of a half, a half wall right here that I can basically move my lights, my box lights back. And for the most part, there's not much other reselling stuff that can be seen from downstairs. Now, I don't have a lot of, you know, <laughs> house parties or anything like that, but there are times that I've got friends over and I just kind of want to hide my reselling stuff from being seen from the downstairs. Now, keep in mind, I, in San Francisco, lived in a studio apartment for almost 10 years. Um, so I definitely am familiar with what it's like to live in a very small space if you happen to. But for now, I created a area that I could kind of easily push to the side and have kind of my house not be completely taken over by reselling. But there are some downsides to this space. So I thought I would talk about my photo space first. Um, this is a flat wall, obviously, but it, it's a pretty short wall because actually everything up is my roof. So an A-frame cabin goes like this. So my roof is actually coming like this. And I didn't want to paint my my um, my wood ceiling. So I do have kind of a short area. You can see this mannequin if I stood up. It's definitely, it's not as tall as me. So it's less than five, five, but I think it's less than five feet is this, this space. And with that comes its challenges with taking photos of longer items. Um, I don't have any many items that are wider than my space, so I don't think it's the width, but it's just more the height that's, that can sometimes get to me. But what I did when I first started reselling, this wall was a stain, which is in part of my house, and I'm trying to slowly but surely revamp <laughs> my house over time. But it was kind of this stained brown color, similar to the color of the ceiling. And I couldn't, I didn't want to use that for the background of my photos. So I actually got some uh, shelf paper and put that up as a temporary way to have something white, a white background. Um, so if you look at some of my older photo photos, you'll see a marbled white background. And that was just a shelf paper that was temporary. Um, that was never supposed to be permanent. But eventually I upgraded to a non-reflective paint, which is this. My dad actually went to a paint store. He likes going to those stores. Um, and he explained to them um, what I needed. And they actually have worked with many photographers in, in their area and uh, recommended this paint. And so I don't remember any details other than it's a non-reflective paint. I can't remember the undertone color, but um, it seems to work great. There are specifics, but again, I think most paint stores would be able to help out. So that's probably a, a good thing for me is just to have a non-reflective paint. Some people have asked me if I would ever, or have if I've ever tried some of the boxes. There are the small photo boxes or the large photo boxes. Um, I would say this, it would not fit here. It would be too tall. Um, it's also very expensive. The tall ones are, I think, $250, $300, somewhere in that range, I think, um, unless they've gone down. But that's a very, very expensive investment. And I already had a space that I could kind of dedicate in a closed off way for my, my photos. So um, I also have heard from some people who have used those photo setups that they're kind of permanent. They're not easy to break down and move into a closet. So if you're going to have something permanent like a light box, um, I, for me, it just makes more sense to just have a photo set up like this. But Definitely something to check out, a bigger investment with one of those. I am thinking about getting a smaller light box for things like hard goods and shoes at some point, um, but that's probably the extent of, of what I'll do. I'll probably just always have something like this. So uh, let's see. Overall, I'm really happy with this photo space. It works for 95% of the stuff I need to take photos of. It's just the height that can be sometimes a problem and yeah. But let's just talk about this box light. So this is by the brand Miwer. Is that 
backwards? It might be backwards. I think it's backwards. Um, but it is just your basic box light. I have two of them. And this little thing can come off and you can kind of peek inside. I don't think you need this on. I just set it up and I've just kind of kept it that way. Those light bulbs I did replace. I will try and link those light bulbs down below in case you want something a little less bright. But there's the reflective aspect of the kind of silver sides. Um, it's very easy. To, these are lightweight, easy to move around if I need to. And then back over here, this is on one side, on the second side, off and off. So what I really like is the simplicity. I don't need to think about it. It could be really late at night. I come up here, I turn these on, and then turn them on on the other one, and um, you know, creates creates some really good lighting. Now I do have natural light, so it doesn't might not seem like that big of a deal. But these are this is what it looks like with both of them on, one of them on and none of them on. So definitely makes a difference for me, especially at nighttime. Um, as far as setting up, it was pretty easy to set up. I do recall having a little bit of confusion around the fuse and that's just because I'm not a lighting person. So <laughs> I mean, um, and I had to call and they, they helped me out. But overall, very simple. Again, for 50 bucks, these have been great. I have not done anything to them. I have not had any problems in the year and a half I've been using them. So you can adjust this section where this whole head, this this box part can kind of go down or go up more. Um, and sometimes I do that if I'm doing flat lays, you can adjust the height. So sometimes I do that when I'm laying um, the board to do flat lays. And that's, yeah, that's basically, that's my box lights. They're, they're so simple. I don't even really have that much to say about them. So uh, again, those will be linked down below in case you are wanting to learn more about the details or the specs, but moving on to the second option. Now, I use this one pretty much equally the same amount of time, or sorry, I use these both almost daily. This one I don't use really for photos for clothing items. This is also the same brand. It is by Miwer. And this is not plugged in because I left the plug downstairs where this usually is. However, if I were to, if I had space and I was just looking for lighting for one thing and one thing only to just take photos of my items, I would 100% say the box lights. They were cheaper, they were easy to set up, no, no thought involved, just kind of some adjustment every once in a while. If I wanted to have a light that I could use for multiple purposes, so for example, I have two YouTube channels. Um, having this and being able to film at night in my house is really helpful and important. So that's primarily what I use this light for now. Why did I get this light in the first place? It's because I had a part, very part-time employee for a couple months and I thought she was going to start taking photos for me. And I was looking for something that could easily store in a closet since she didn't have too much space. This is very thin. It does have the tripod on the bottom, but that can, you know, be fairly thin as well. So it's very easy to store in a closet, which I really like. It's also, you just hold the camera in the middle and it's got basically lighting all around the object, whatever you're taking a photo of. Um, as far as taking photos of clothing items, and I think a lot of people have this, so definitely chime in with a comment below if you have this and if you've if you've figured out anything on, on workarounds with this. I have heard from people that it can create a little bit of a ring shadow when you're taking photos, especially up against a wall, um, especially on a mannequin or, so I have heard some complaints about the shadow, the ring shadow that could come with this. I do think there are some um, some solutions that people have figured out, but since I don't use this for primary, for my primary purposes of taking photos of, of my items, it's just not, it hasn't been something I've been really worried about. As far as YouTube videos, it's great. I can't show the brightness, but let's just tell you it gets bright. The only thing I like about this, that the other one doesn't have is the on off the little this is click on and off i almost always go to the lowest setting for my youtube videos because it's just it's just a, a, a little bit of natural light that comes with it the more you turn this the brighter it gets and it's it's excessive however if you're trying to take photos of something to, to display a flaw in maybe a clothing item or something having the ability to make it brighter or more dim is I think really helpful. So it's probably the only thing that I would say is kind of nice about having this, but I also like the simplicity of just not thinking about, <laughs> about it with the other ones. So, um, and as far as the versatility with this, there's a little thing on the side, unscrew it. You can actually 
lock this in place and have it do flat lays. So maybe you're doing something on the ground and you wanna be able to have light shining down. That's a really nice feature. Again, the box lights do that too, not necessarily to the extreme of this, but I think most lights have that, um, have that option. And the other really nice thing about this, so maybe you have a family and you're always kind of wanting to take family photos and um, you don't have a tripod. This is actually a really great option for family photos and also being able to have a little bit of lighting. You don't even have to have the light turned on and you can use this as, as a tripod. So this little, this little feature right here holds a cell phone um, and you can do it this way or the other way. Um, and you can take family photos and you can set the timer on your phone and it's a really great option and also having the lighting helps as well. So these are the two that I have tried. I am not a lighting expert, nor will I probably ever be, um, but I do think that I have had really great luck with this for a year and a half for 50 bucks, not having any issues. I'm really quite pleased. And then having this for my videos and just having something a little bit more, um, you know, move it around wherever I need. I really do like this. So I think both are great options. Let me know if you have either of these and if you like them. Um, again, there are lots of other options out there, but I think that was very overwhelming for me <laughs> because there's so many options. So if you just want to take my, uh, my experience, I think either of these would be great. And, um, so yeah, check them out down below, hit the thumbs up on your way out, and I will see you guys in another video tomorrow. Bye guys.